welcome to my channel. I am Crystal TV, and today we're going to talk about slaying of the new year God's way. Can I get some snaps? Hold on, this tea is really good. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to be talking about slaying the new year God's way. Now, sis, I know you're probably thinking, like, I don't want another sermon or a pep talk about what I need to do with my life. But this isn't really a pep talk, it's more so from my heart to yours, from my life to yours and from my experience to yours. Okay, all right, let's do it. So this year for me was pretty crazy, and one thing I can identify this year was how high my anxiety was, and how high I was in just all the emotional distress that I felt, and it wasn't fun. It just wasn't fun, okay? Okay, it wasn't fun. But in this new year, I now know as an individual that God is not calling me to live in fear. God is not calling me to live in anxiety. God is not calling me to live in emotional distress. He's calling me and he is calling you, sis, yes you, to live in freedom. Freedom to be liberated from your emotions that keep you in bondage. Freedom to be liberated from the things that are tying you down from being your best you. So that is the first way we are going to slay the new year is by putting those emotions in check, okay? Putting them in check does not mean not recognizing them, not dealing with them, and not acknowledging them. Putting them in check means not letting them control your life, not letting them control how you act, how you treat others, how you think of God, how you think of yourself, and so on. That is our first task for this new year. Okay, all right. Secondly, we are going to slay the new year by trusting God's plan for our life. How are we gonna do this, sis? <laughs> Hold on, let me tell you. We're gonna trust God this year by understanding that our definition of elevation, our definition of good, our definition of growth isn't God's definition of growth, elevation, or good. Let me give you an example because I don't think you really believe me. Okay, all right. So we all know the Bible story of Joseph, how he was sold into slavery. It's a shame, right? It's, it's, it's a shame. And then became like a house help for Portifor and then was accused of raping Portifor's wife and then was sent to jail and then was eventually going to be killed and then was able to, you know, start to decipher some dreams the king or the ruler at that time was having and it was then at that point that he was elevated but check it here sis he went through so much before the elevation happened now had joseph given up after he got sold into slavery do you think he would have made it as the second commander in that time do you think he would have made it to the point where he was if he had just given up and had just let go of whatever he believed of God to do for his life, he did it. He kept going. Even though his life was not great, was not Instagram worthy, was not even praise worthy, he kept going. After he was sold into slavery, you know what? He just, he was like, you know, I'm gonna get through it, dude. I'm gonna get through it, dog. And then after that, he still pushed through, even after being accused wrongly in the house of port of force so it's like when we see ourselves in harsh times when we see ourselves surrounded by harsh circumstances we can't just give up we can't just say that god is not working for our good because in those moments god was working for joseph's good if you think of it in the long run had he not been slowed into slavery he wouldn't have ended up where he needed to be. We need to make sure that we're not judging our life based off of the, I guess, the not so ideal circumstances. We have to make sure we're not judging our life based off of what we don't define as good. Because even biblically, Jesus going to the cross does not seem good to me. Him being hung, him being, you know, mocked, beaten, all that stuff does not sound good to me. But guess who it did sound good to? Guess whose perfect plan that was? God's. Sometimes God's perfect plan for what he says it is doesn't sound like that to us. But we have to understand that we're not God. We're just not. We're human beings. We, we're just out here doing whatever we need to do to survive. And we have to trust that God is all-seeing, all-knowing, and can do all things. 
And it's so important that we stay grounded in this mindset come 2019 because we're going to need it to slay it, sis. We're going to need it to slay spiritually. We're going to need it to slay and grow and thrive and just become more and more of the woman that God has called us to be. So that's something that we need to stay grounded in. We have to know that God's elevation may not look like what I would desire from elevation you know, for my elevation to be, whether that be being recognized or, you know, starting a business and it blowing up overnight and something just amazing happening in the blink of an eye. Like, no, we have to not live in a microwave mindset. Things don't happen overnight sometimes. Things don't happen in a year sometimes. But when we trust God, it's no longer about when it happens, but how God is gonna collect the glory out of it. It's no longer about, God, when are you gonna do this? It's about, okay, God, how can I do it well? How can I steward it well? And how can I, you know, actually, actually be um, fruitful in what you're calling me to do and, and what you're calling me to possess in this moment? So that is the third way we're going to be slaying this new year. The fourth way we're going to be slaying this new year is by taking on the words of God, like literally taking them on. I think that it's cute. You know, we go to church, we hear scripture, we probably even know scripture and we maybe even quote it sometimes, but are we truly believing the word of God? Are we truly letting it sit and soak and marinate? That is what we need to ask ourselves today, ladies and gentlemen. But we need to ask ourselves this question because the word of God is going to be a strong tower in times of need. The word of God is going to keep us anchored. God's words spoken over us are going to keep us grounded. And if we do not know them and or believe them, that's going to be a problem this year. It's going to be a problem. So it's okay. You don't have to know everything today. But my encouragement to you would be little by little, writing that down, posting it on your wall, posting it in the mirror, speaking God's words over your life, that you are loved, that you are seen, that you are known, that God has a perfect plan for your life. These are things you have to believe and stay anchored in. If you do not know the character of God, you will not trust who God is and what God can do in your life. If you don't know someone, how are you going to trust them? You just, just don't wake up trusting people, okay? You don't. So the thing is, we have to be more intentional about believing the word of God, speaking the word of God over our lives, and not allowing the enemy to convince us about who we are, but to tell the enemy whose we are. We don't have to convince the enemy because he already knows whose we are, but we have to tell him, hey, look, you're too close. Back up. Back up. I'm a child of God. I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. And nothing will prevail against me. Nothing. Okay? And nothing. So it's like, this year, we are going to slay, ladies. <laughs> We're going to slay. And I just felt the need to post this video because I think that it's important that I share areas that I noticed that were lacking last year and talk about them for this year. And I don't know if these areas relate to you or if these things are helpful or encouraging for you, but either way, I hope this video blessed you or blessed someone. Um, if you think it was a blessing, share, share, share. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time and I pray your new year goes amazing. Bye.